the rollers for the Galpin Autosports project car are back. Welcome back everyone. So for one whole episode, we've teased the Tracking Ponies Garage all-star car. One whole episode of teasing. You know, we did think about dragging out the content and delaying the surprise and delaying what, what car we consider to be uh, very important to the garage. But you know, we'd rather just show you the car, get it over with, and then spend most of the content on the track, showing you how the car performs and showing you how the car performs. Now, I'm not going to drag out the reveal of this vehicle over multiple episodes over multiple weeks, but what I will do is waste your time today talking about it. Let's start. All right. This is the stage one set of upgrades we did to the vehicle and give you some more clues and see if you can guess as we move down. We started with the RST clutch, trans cooler air scoop, lowering kit, Barton short shifter, some Cook's headers, exhaust, X-pipe, green catted comp system, and Mustang brake duct kit. That was stage one. Let's take a look at stage two. I mean, you obviously already know what it is, but just, just humor me for a little while. All right, we start with the cold air intake, the Cobra Jet that is. Move on down to the super oval Cobra Jet throttle body. Cobra Jet intake. 47 pound. Camshafts, 13 millimeters of lift on both. Control arms. Adapters. And a gauge pack. Starting on stage three, you know what? Forget it. Here's the car. We of course have the red key flash. Well, that just gave it away. So you know what? Let's reveal the car this way. Let's just show you the window sticker. Cause you already know what it is anyway. Okay, I'm gonna set the window sticker down here on this cupcake baking trays. Okay, anyway. This is the 2012 Ford Mustang Boss 302. As you can see here, I'll just let the print speak for itself. And this does have the Torsen 373. And it came with the Recaro racing seats. This vehicle runs on E85, race fuel, and 91 octane. Rear wheel horsepower came in at 499.94. We're figuring it makes a healthy 580, 585 at the crank, somewhere around there, depending on the weather. But it is a spectacular car to drive. We love it, it is so much fun. It's analog in a, in a very special way and it challenges the driver at all times to stay awake. 
The purpose is very clear what this car is for. It is our all out track weapon. This car is being modeled like a track replica of the Boss 302S. It does have a VIN number and it can drive on the street, but by the time we're done, it will not be street legal. As far as front engine, rear wheel drive, six speed manual, live rear axle cars go, this will probably be one of the most fun to drive around the track. Rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. <laughs> Why does my jaw slide to one side when I say rear? I, only when I say rear wheel. Rear, that's okay. Rear, <laughs> what is wrong? The Boss 302 feels incredibly analog and presents a unique challenge. If we can master this car around the track, we should be able to drive a lot of the other cars a lot easier. Part of the reason is there's a live rear axle, despite the watts link. We are dealing with also the MT82, which likes to do high RPM lockout. And as it comes in at about 3,400 pounds, it is still relatively heavy for the track compared to most cars that you see. Now, as far as Mustangs go, the GT350 feels a little bit more effortless to drive around track. It is fun, it is precise, and it has the power to deliver. The Boss 302 has a little bit more of an analog feel to it. It is very challenging, but when you nail it and you plant that rear end, it is so rewarding. It sounded weird. Comparably to the GT350, the GT350 is a little easier to drive. It makes the experience a little bit more effortless and the Tremec transmission is definitely smooth around the road course. However, the Boss 302 presents its own fun challenges and rewards. The live rear axle, the analog feel, and the little bit less weight that it has compared to the GT350 really make it fun to drive. And when you nail the turns and you come out of the Apexes properly, it is so rewarding and fun. We also have full racing slicks and the Apex EC7s on the car now. The Boss has been seam welded, but there is a lot of suspension work we still would like to do. You know, there's still a little bit of body roll in the Boss, and as much as we've done so far, we still have a lot of room to go. There's a lot of work to do still on it. The Boss rear end does get upset if you're traveling too fast over the curbs. Uh, when we were going around Button Willow, that it was hopping around a lot, so you can't ride the curbs a lot in that car. But if you stay on the pavement, we had a lot of success. That, that was my experience. There are a few other drivers that said they had no problems over the curbs, but let's keep in mind that they are much better drivers than me. One of the things we are very excited about is we put in the full road race Watson cage. Now that should stiffen up the chassis and the body roll a lot. The strongest part of the car is obviously the Roadrunner motor. Now we did do the intake and exhaust cams that have 13 millimeters of lift. That definitely helped the engine breathe at higher RPMs. The Cobra Jet intake manifold, Super Oval Jet throttle body, Super Cobra Jet oval throttle body, and the, co uh, the, co the Cobra Jet cold air intake really helped that as well. Cook's headers, exhaust brought the car up to 499.94 rear rear wheel horsepower. My father and I discussed with Eddie over at Addiction Motorsports, who said, hey, Eddie, you know what? We're gonna dyno this and throw it on the rollers again when it's cold. Because we actually dynoed the car when it was about 92 degrees outside. It was just the timing of the situation. We wanted to get the car out on the track. So we're gonna head back in the winter. We're gonna redyno it. I'm really, 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 really hoping for a 500 rear wheel horsepower result. So what we'd like to do with the boss is have you join us on the journey of all our successes, failures, and everything else in between as we take the boss to as many racetracks as we can. We're gonna try and hit as many as we can in the 11 Western states. Again, I don't know if that's gonna be five or if it's gonna be 55, but we're gonna do the best we can. And as with the 17 Shelby GT350, we are again jumping in in the middle of the build. We didn't think to get our cameras rolling when we started these builds. We didn't actually think uh, anyone would really be interested. We kind of just thought, well, a lot of people work on Mustangs, a lot of people build cars, and a lot of people said, well, yeah, and they all put it on YouTube, so why don't you guys do it? We thought, you know what, why not? We've got a GoPro, we'll get started there, you know, we'll get some better cameras and audio equipment down the road, but right now, we got a GoPro, and we'll share with you our experiences with our cars on the track, on the road course, and maybe we're gonna add a drag racing vehicle pretty soon. We don't know, but we'll see.